In November of 2019, for a third year in a row, land and water protectors from across Canada came to the U.S. to spread the word about the damage to rivers and communities caused by mega dams, and to show why hydro dams are falsely being portrayed as clean, green, and renewable energy for the U.S. Their mission is to stop new mega dams and transmission corridors and restore the natural order of their rivers and communities that have depended on these lands for a millennia. I am offering tobacco to the river, asking for forgiveness for that they did not know what they were doing to the river. And by that, I'm going to be doing it in my language. The group came to Augusta, Maine, to the site of the former Edwards Dam, which was removed 20 years ago in order to restore it to its natural state, to, in part, get inspiration and hope of removing their own dams. So when the time comes, this tobacco is going to go down this river. And it's going to carry that peace. There are hundreds of mega dams across Canada that have been exporting hydropower from large dams to the U.S. And they, alongside with transmission line corporations, falsely claim that this is clean, green energy. In Labrador on the Grand River, the new Muskrat Falls hydropower is planned for export as well. And in 2009, Hydro-Quebec started building its Romaine complex of mega dams to produce hydropower for export. The Le Grand Dam drains 68,000 square miles. That's twice the area of Maine. The group are here to explain how decades of studies show that mega dams cause unacceptable methylmercury poisoning of indigenous people. These large dams um, produce a lot of methylmercury. They, um, there's naturally occurring mercury in vegetation, and when it's flooded, when reservoirs are flooded, when it's submerged in water, that mercury gets released as methylmercury. Um, it's a harmful neurotoxin, and it like builds up and builds up in our food web. Already, people in our community have higher than average mercury levels. So our baseline is starting at higher, and now they're adding the second dam, and they're trying to add a third. For over 100 years, mega dams across Canada have caused cultural genocide by flooding indigenous lands. Rivers are their highways, traveled on by canoes, dog sleds, and skidoos. And because they must rely on wild-caught foods, people still practice these traditional ways, even if it's dangerous. People have to drive through rapids to get to their camp, their fishing areas, their hunting areas. I've lost a grandfather because of the rising and lowering of these waters. So when you have a first layer of ice, there's a second layer of ice underneath there's water flowing. And when you travel with your skiddo, you don't know where that is because it's covered with snow. Your navigation skills as an elder have changed because you don't know where those waters are now. They're where they used to be before Manitoba Hydro came along or before Quebec. You know, I expect at some point I'll have grandchildren. I'm thinking about them and being able to make sure that they can go out and hunt and fish still. I lived in a very pristine area. The water was very clean. The way I, I saw it, my granddaughter will not ever see that. We head back to the dam site to speak with Steve Brook about the importance of dam removal and how it's brought Maine waters back to their natural states and why it's so important for Canada to do the same. This dam blocked the migration of all of the fish that come in from the ocean that need to reproduce in fresh water. But the fish that have come back, they're the river herring, the Atlantic sturgeon, uh, the American shad, the blueback herring, the alewife, and this is a story I hope will be of help and of hope. They too can remove the dam at the proper time. 